Finally, just want to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, the situation with the infected cattery. This is really the big problem. You know, if you want to scare a cattery owner, just say the word ringworm, because to get ringworm is a real disaster, be it in a, in a boarding cattery or in a breeding cattery. And really, this can be a, a financial disaster, it can cost many thousands of pounds to really sort this problem out. If you don't do the problem, if you don't go through things properly, it's likely that you will never quite sort the problem out and there'll always be a low level of infection. So you have to really have very committed owners and certainly Doug DeBoer and Karen Moriello who have done a lot of this work, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago would quite often talk about, uh, you know, euthanasia and just closing a place down because the problem just could not be got rid of. And of course, we've all seen kittens being sold by breeders who probably know that they've got dermatophytosis in their cattery and they're just exporting problems to other people and it's just not fair. So we, we have a duty, I think, to really do this thoroughly. Uh, obviously, we need to have very motivated uh, clients and if they're not motivated, then don't make too many promises. I think where we really see these problems is in the uh, pedigree catteries, people breeding Persians, breeding Himalayans. You know, it is a problem. They go off to uh, shows. Sometimes the hygiene there is not as good as it should be, although it's obviously improved a lot over the last 10 years. And they can bring stuff in. Uh, and then, of course, we have problems. So as an aside, it's not been mentioned on here. For people who are showing a lot, it is well worth if they have a particular animal that they are showing a lot to consider keeping him or her in isolation during the showing season and regularly having him cultured. Because some cats, you know, so I've certainly seen Persian cats who haven't got a, anything obvious on them, but you put a, a, a woods lamp on them and they glow. So it can be something that they carry that nobody's really aware of until perhaps a human or another cat starts to develop lesions and we look to the uh, the Persians and the Himalayas um, as the carriers of that particular problem. So in a situation where you've got, you know that you've got one or two cats with ringworm in a cattery, the first piece of news that I would give the client is if one or two have got it, unless you are being very thorough and you're having them in completely separate areas, the likelihood is that they all have it because you're going in in the same clothes, you're probably carrying ringworm into the next kennel, you're helping to spread the infection. So if two or three cats are infected in a cattery, presume that they all are. And what I would usually do in that situation is perform cultures on all the cats. Send them off or do them in-house if you feel comfortable doing that. And if after you know the two or three weeks you get some samples back and those there are cats that have do not have M. Canis, then separate those, isolate them, but reculture because unfortunately in the two or three weeks that you've been waiting for your result, it's very possible that they have become infected with M. Canis. I think you have to isolate the cattery. You have to practice very very good hygiene, uh, changing out of clothes if necessary. Um, certainly disinfecting, you know, shoes and so on as you get walking in and out of places and certainly putting a stop to people coming into the cattery, uh, new cats coming in if it's a boarding kennel uh, and certainly stopping showing at shows if you know that you have uh, an M. canis problem in your cattery. I think if you want to really get rid of the problem quickly and time is money and, you know, we know that itrafungal is not a cheap product to use, then, you know, I think it is well worth getting uh, a couple of the nurses into the cattery because that, of course, stops them bringing their infection into the surgery. And uh, with some Domitor and Torbjizic going around sedating the cats and clipping them pretty short. I mean, if you clip them very, very short, of course, you can cut them. And, of course, that can then uh, allow dermatophytes to get into the skin more. So you may not want to use the very short blade, but you want to clip them back reasonably aggressively um, and, you know, think about using your enylconazole washers or, or perhaps Malaseb. You know, Malaseb has also been used in those situations. 
it's recon as all used on all the animals as per the instructions so a week on a week off a week on a week off a week on a week off and I would have thought at about the the four to six week period you do a culture of all of those cats for a fungal culture if you have negative dermatophytes I would remove them from the infected area and I would treat probably for another couple of cycles so um, you know certainly although it's recognized that you do it for three cycles you know there is no problem for doing it perhaps for a fourth one in the meantime while all of that is happening you're obviously treating the environment very thoroughly enylconazole can be used on the environment uh, as can bleach obviously you need to make sure that you're not going to bleach a, an expensive sofa or an expensive carpet but um, you should be treating the environment regularly and thoroughly hoovering getting rid of the bags uh, spraying the areas that uh, you know carpets curtains washing things thoroughly perhaps getting a carpet cleaner in to really give them a good going over when you've you've uh, done that several times and we wait until we get uh, negative cultures and once we have negative cultures for everybody we can say that this uh, category is now open for business again but you know you can be taking certainly two to three months and many hundreds if not thousands of pounds depending on the number of cats to sort this problem out so it is not um, it is not a problem to be tackled lightly or for the faint-hearted it is one of those words as I say dermatophytosis in a cattery which strikes fear into uh, into cat lovers hearts I think that's all I want to uh, to say at the moment